Chapter 5 of Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Arnie Horton. Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic by Thomas Higginson. Chapter 5 Bran the Blessed. The mighty King Bran, a being of gigantic size, sat one day on the cliffs of his island in the atlantic ocean near to hades and the gates of night when he saw ships sailing towards him and sent men to ask what they were they were a fleet sent by mathalwe the king of ireland who had sent to ask for branwen bran's sister as his wife without moving from his rock bran bid the monarch land and sent branwen back with him as queen but there came a time when branwen was ill-treated at the palace they sent her into the kitchen and made her cook for the court and they caused the butcher to come every day after he had cut up the meat and give her a blow on the ear they also drew up all their boats on the shore for three years that she might not send for her brother but she reared a starling in the cover of the kneading trough taught it to speak and told it how to find her brother and then she wrote a letter describing her sorrows and bound it to the bird's wing and it flew to the island and alighted on bran's shoulder ruffling its feathers says the welsh legend so that the letter was seen and they knew that the bird had been reared in a domestic manner then bran resolved to cross the sea but he had to wade through the water as no ship had yet been built large enough to hold him and he carried all his musicians pipers on his shoulders as he approached the irish shore men ran to the king saying that they had seen a forest on the sea where there never before had been a tree and that they had also seen a mountain which moved then the king asked branwen the queen what it could be she answered these are the men of the island of the mighty who have come hither to protect me what is the forest they asked the yards and masts of ships what mountain is that by the side of the ships it is bran my brother coming to the shoal water and rising what is the lofty ridge with the lake on each side that is his nose she said and the two lakes are his fierce eyes then the people were terrified there was yet a river for bran to pass and they broke down the bridge which crossed it but Bran laid himself down and said, Who will be a chief, let him be a bridge. Then his men laid hurdles on his back, and the whole army crossed over. And that saying of his became afterwards a proverb. Then the Irish resolved, in order to appease the mighty visitor, to build him a house, because he had never before had one that would hold him. And they decided to make the house large enough to contain the two armies, one on each side. They accordingly built this house, and there were a hundred pillars, and the builders treacherously hung a leather bag on each side of each pillar, and put an armed man inside of each, so that they could all rise by night and kill the sleepers. But Bran's brother, who was a suspicious man, asked the builders what was in the first bag. Meal, good soul, they answered, and he, putting his hand in, felt the man's head and crushed it with his mighty fingers and so with the next and the next and with the whole two hundred after this it did not take long to bring on a quarrel between the two armies and they fought all day after this great fight between the men of ireland and the men of the isles of the mighty there were but seven of these last who escaped besides their king bran who was wounded in the foot with a poisoned dart then he knew that he should soon die but he bade the seven men to cut off his head and told them that they must always carry it with them that it would never decay and would always be able to speak and be pleasant company for them a long time you will be on the road he said in harlech you will feast seven years the birds of rhiannon singing to you all the while and at the island of Wales you will dwell for fourscore years, and you may remain there, bearing the head with you uncorrupted. 
until you open a door that looks towards the mainland and after you have once opened that door you can stay no longer but must set forth to london to bury the head leaving it there to look toward france so they went on to harlech and there stopped to rest and sat down to eat and drink and there came three birds which began singing a certain song and all the songs they had ever heard were unpleasant compared with it and the song seemed to them to be a great distance from them over the sea yet the notes were heard as distinctly as if they were close by and it is said that at this repast they continued seven years at the close of this time they went forth to an island in the sea called Wales. there they found a fair and regal spot overlooking the ocean and a spacious hall built for them they went into it and found two of its doors opened but the third door looking toward cornwall was closed see yonder said their leader manawedon that is the door we may not open and that night they regaled themselves and were joyful and of all they had seen of food laid before them and of all they had heard said they remembered nothing neither of that nor of any sorrow whatsoever there they remained fourscore years unconscious of having ever spent a time more joyous and mirthful and they were not more weary than when first they came neither did they any of them know the time they had been there it was not more irksome for them to have the head with them than if bran the blessed had been with them himself and because of these fourscore years it was called the entertaining of the noble head one day said hylwin the son of gwyn evil betide me if i do not open the door to know if that is true which is said concerning it so he opened the door and looked towards cornwall and when they had looked they were as conscious of all the evils they had ever sustained and of all the friends and companions they had ever lost and of all the misery that had befallen them as if all had happened in that very spot and especially of the fate of their lord and because of their perturbation they could not rest but journeyed forth with the head towards london and they buried the head in the white mount the island called Wales is supposed to be that now named gresholm eight or ten miles off the coast of pembrokeshire and to this day the welsh sailors on that coast talk of the green meadows of enchantment lying out at sea west of them and of men who had either landed on them or seen them suddenly vanishing some of the people of milford used to declare that they could sometimes see the green islands of the fairies quite distinctly and they believed that the fairies went to and fro between their islands and the shore through a subterranean gallery under the sea they used indeed to make purchases in the markets of milford or langhorn and this they did sometimes without being seen and always without speaking for they seemed to know the prices of the things they wished to buy and always laid down the exact sum of money needed and indeed how could the seven companions of the enchanted head have spent eighty years of incessant feasting on an island of the sea without sometimes purchasing supplies from the mainland end of chapter five